So here are the presentation goals. I wanna talk a little bit about different battery chemistries and what's the top, maybe the best one for you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about sizing, uh, charging, uh, how to use the battery, a little bit about storage. And there's a lot, I put a lot, embedded a lot of links in this presentation. Uh, uh, there's a lot of extra reading that could be done. Uh, we're gonna go over a lot of stuff pretty fast. And I am not a battery expert. Um, I'm more of a power distribution systems expert, more in the 11 kV, a uh, little bit of 480 volt. Um, but I have been involved tangentially uh, in data center applications where <clears throat> we were building new projects with batteries for UPSs. Uh, and I'm talking about on the scale of maybe 30 megawatts uh, that has to hold for seven minutes long enough to allow uh, generators to start. And um, kind of interesting to watch uh, some of the changes that have happened uh, over the last uh, three years or so. Some changes in, in conventional thinking. So this chart talks a little bit, I don't know, can you guys see this okay? <clears throat> it talks a little bit about battery chemistries and uh, versus size and weight. And on the horizontal axis, axis, we have energy density by weight. So essentially that would be ampere hours uh, per watt hours per kilogram. And on the vertical, uh, it's more about energy density by volume. So Horizontal is how heavy stuff is, and the vertical axis is about how how big it is. And obviously, if we're going to lug stuff up hills uh, for uh, rest stop deployments where we got to hike in, we might want something a little lighter. Uh, don't really need to belabor this, but you'll see that lead acid is pretty heavy, and lithium ion is pretty light. And, and more compact. Um, also wanna talk about all of these sets of parameters, size, weight, voltage, capacity. Um, another important thing is how long will the battery last? There's not just calendar life, but the life of the battery tends to depend on how many charge and discharge cycles you do, as well as how deep you charge and discharge. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, operating temperatures, uh, different chemistries have different behaviors with respect to operating temperatures, both discharge and charge, and also storage. Um, and safety comes into play. One of, the, one of the big issues with lithium ion is the UL, I think it's 9548 test, where they actually drive a nail into the battery and um, lithium fires are very hard to put out. One of the big drivers is the actual total cost of ownership. And when we talk about cost of ownership, it's not just the price of the battery per ampere hour. You have to consider other factors. Again, how many cycles? How deep can you discharge it? And if I look at an example uh, of a a lead acid battery versus a lithium battery, lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate. Um, if I consider, uh, I've got a, 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 an example up here where the lithium ion might cost three times per ampere hour what the lead acid costs. But when I factor in the number of cycles uh, at, and, and how deep I can, I can discharge 50% maximum depth of discharge with, with uh, lead acid. But when I factor those things in, I find that the true cost of lithium ion is about 0.625 the cost of lead acid. So something to consider. And that's why data centers are doing change outs. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, here are some of the major types of batteries listed. You got lead acid, nickel cadmium. Um, I used to think of nickel cadmium as uh, being um, heavier 
but a similar uh, energy density. Um, it's still, uh, nickel cadmium is still used quite a bit in the utility industry for, um, for substation, um, substation power where the substation's outdoors and has to endure some uh, higher temperatures. Uh, uh, PG&E prefers nickel cadmium to lead acid for those applications. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride. Um, most of the jump has been to uh, lithium ion. And I will say, and, and the different flavors of lithium, lithium ion. And there are some emerging technologies out there. Uh, I'm not really gonna go into those either. Okay, so again, you'll have this, uh, you'll have this presentation and the links. And I put uh, links to most of these uh, 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 charts and pictures and uh, groups of statements. Across the top, you've got lead acid, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, uh, three types of lithium ion. And what we see the most in electric vehicles, and uh, or the, the two types we see the most, are actually a combination of cobalt manganese, nickel metal uh, uh, manganese, uh, 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 N, nickel manganese cobalt, NMC. That's what you see in electric vehicles. Uh, likely that's what's in the daiquiri, I can't say for sure. Uh, but when we talk about generic lithium ion, for the most part, it's NMC, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Um, yeah. Um, versus lithium iron phosphate, uh, uh, also known as LIFE for ferrous, uh, phosphate is PO4, and we abbreviate that LFP. So we got N, uh, a lithium NMC, lithium uh, LFP, those are the two most common. Um, and I've highlighted some of the things uh, that, that we look at uh, uh, in red, um, including things like the number of charge, discharge cycles. Um, and yeah, we'll, 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 we may spend more time on that if, if if we have time. Um, so these are the two major types of lithium ion, lithium, NMC and LFP. And we look at specific power, specific energy. Um, specific power is by weight, how much current can you draw for a relatively short duration, or how much how much current can you draw? How much power can you draw? Versus specific energy is how long can you draw? It's how much energy. So it's power versus energy. Energy integrates over time. When we talk about energy, we're talking about hours. We're talking about power and time together. When we talk about power, it's just power. And different chemistries are better at at, at fast delivery of power uh, versus uh, maybe longer, uh, being able to sustain a, a smaller load longer. Um, and when we talk about specific power, specific energy, we're talking by weight. Um, safety, um, again, uh, uh, different types of lithium are safer than others. And if I look at, um, uh, the two examples here, and I go over to the safety column, which is SF. Uh, I see that safety for lithium ion is medium for NMC, but for LFP, uh, it's 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 high. It's H for high, so it, they're they tend to be safer batteries. Uh, if I look at life span LS. Same thing, I see that LFP actually outperforms uh, NMC. Uh, but when I look at specific power and specific energy, uh, I see that, well, specific energy, how long will the battery, uh, how, how long can I, can I continue to discharge it? How much energy will it hold? Uh, I see that NMC is higher 
than lithium iron phosphate than LFT. So you, you actually pay a little bit of a penalty in energy density when you go to LFT. So these are the things you have to consider. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is graphically uh, how some of these parameters are presented. And graphically, you can see that NMC does real well over here when it comes to, what is that? That's uh, energy, um, energy density. Um, but you can see that lithium uh, uh, LFP fades a little bit there, but it's, it's a little safer and it has longer life. So, and that's how you, that's how you read these curves. So now let's talk about, I've sort of made a case for lithium over lead acid. Um, when you look at the total cost of ownership, chances are you're gonna go to either lithium ion or uh, LFP, lithium ion phosphate, lithium, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, you're talking about sinking a bunch of bucks based on getting a longer lasting and better performing battery, uh, but you, you, you gotta protect your investment. If you don't, it's not gonna last and your total cost of ownership is gonna go up, not down. So you gotta take care of it. And when we talk about taking care of our batteries, we have to, we have to get some nomenclature down and understand a little bit about how they work. And we know that batteries have two electrodes, you know, positive and negative, um, that the energy can go in two directions. One, essentially we're draining energy from the battery when we discharge it into our load. And when we restore or put energy back in, we're charging our battery. And ions, uh, what are ions? Do we know what ions are? Ions are like charged particles. Uh, they're um, uh, compounds, chemical compounds with uh, additional, either one electron too many or one proton too many. So they're electrically charged and they're small uh, in the lithium ion battery and there's a membrane and they migrate back and forth depending on whether you're charging or discharging. And um, it's almost like breathing. It's like you're breathing out and breathing in, the battery's kind of breathing. It's either discharging or charging. That's that analogy down here, kind of, kind of interesting. Um, okay, here are, we talked about charging and discharging. There's an anode and a cathode. And the positive, uh, the, the, the positive pole in the battery is the cathode, the negative is the anode, and our uh, current is kind of going in this direction during when we're, when we're discharging the battery and then it's going the reverse, whoops, when we charge the battery. Um, so discharging and charging, I mean, it's not rocket science, you're either putting energy in or taking it out and, and you have to be careful uh, about doing that. And when you largely discharge a battery and recharge it, that's a cycle. Um, the capacity of a rechargeable battery is often measured in ampere hours. Remember I said power and time. The voltage for whatever battery pack you have is going to be pretty much a constant. So just forget the voltage a minute. The thing that's going to vary is the number of amperes can deliver for how long? Um, we have uh, discharge and charging rates. And every battery, if you look at the data sheet, it's going to have, uh, you know, there, there are different parameters, but one of the parameters you'll see for a charge rate or a, or a discharge rate is um, how long can it deliver current, or excuse me, how much current can it deliver for two seconds? How much current can it deliver for 30 seconds? How much current can it deliver, or it may be longer than 30 seconds, and then how much current can it deliver for a long time continuously? And we call those values of current, they're values of C. And 
a lot of times we look at um, the continuous for a long period of time uh, and the values for discharging and charging are a little bit different, but they're gonna be published and you're gonna see a long-term value. So when we start looking at some curves later, we'll talk about how discharging and charging at different rates uh, impacts the battery. And we'll look at those as a percentage of the, of the, the published rate. Uh, let's see, what else? So we talked about the C rate, that's important. And that's gonna differ uh, between, uh, from charging and discharging, the C rate, how much current for a while. Um, another thing we look at is the voltage level. Um, you know, we can measure the voltage on the battery, obviously. Uh, and we'll talk about charging and discharging curves a little bit. Um, but the state of charge uh, is a function, uh, or the, the, the voltage level kind of reflects the state of charge when you're charging and discharging. But with lithium batteries, the curve is pretty flat and temperature affects the voltage sometimes more than the state of charge or state of discharge. Um, so let's talk about state of charge and depth of discharge. Um, if I have a battery that's rated at 20 ampere hours at 100%, when it's 100% charge, it should be able to deliver about 20 ampere hours if I take it down to zero. Um, and that's usually in percentage. So uh, half of that would be 10 ampere hours. So if I've taken 10 ampere hours, 10 amps for an hour or five amps for two hours out of my battery, out of my 20 ampere hour battery, uh, I should have about 50% of the charge left. Uh, we also talk about depth of discharge, which is just the opposite. If I take 100% and subtract whatever my state of charge is, that's my depth of discharge. So if I've got 100% state of charge, I have 0% state of uh, 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 depth of discharge. If I have 50% state of charge left and I've discharged, that the discharge is 50%. If it's 80% of my charge left, then I've discharged 20%. See how that works? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. So that's, you, you can almost use state of charge and depth of discharge um, interchangeably as long as you remember that you just take one that from 100 and that's the remaining percent. Okay. Um, Multiple cycles, batteries do degrade over time and we'll see some curves. Um, unfortunately, there's a finite amount of cycles a battery will last and the number of cycles that it will last has to do with how fast you discharge it, how many, how, well, that's uh, how many, uh, uh, pretty much how fast you charge and discharge and, and the temperature at which you do that. Um, to make the battery last, you have to manage the depth of discharge. A lead acid battery, to make it last, you really can only discharge to about 50%. If you go deeper than that, you're going to shorten the life of the battery. Um, lithium ion, lithium phosphate, uh, LFP, NMC, uh, you can pretty much go to 80% repeatedly. And they're going to last a long time. You know, multi, many times uh, the life of lead acid. But you have to manage the depth of discharge, and you have to manage the rate of charge and the rate of of, uh, of discharge. Uh, but to make it last, you got to manage the temperature, the the um, the charging and discharging rate, and the depth of discharge. Uh, another thing people talk about is uh, balancing the battery. Uh, even for, so when we have um, a 12 volt battery, uh, whether it's lithium ion or uh, whether it's NMC or LFP, um, lithium 
NMC is uh, inherently 3.7 volts per cell. And you put them in there, they're put in series. The battery manufacturer puts cells in series. Same with LFP, that's 3.2 volts. Um, so 12.8 volts means you got four in series for LFP. And um, when you are charging and discharging, the cells might not all behave the same because of even if they're all produced in the same batch between two cells in the same batch, there can be differences. So uh, you have to have a way, if, if you kill one cell in the series, you've killed the whole battery and Milt knows all about that. And I'm not, yeah, not sure how that happened. Um, we'll, we'll talk about some of the ways to do that. But one of the things that, um, that you do to maximize the life of your battery is by balancing it. And uh, the battery that we just pointed to has protection circuitry and balancing circuitry on board. Um, some have external, some have it on board. Uh, I've got a, a Shorei uh, 12 volt, I think it's a 14 ampere hour that puts the balancing circuitry in the charger. And it's got a special charging port and equalization uh, of the cells is done and the balancing is done during charging. Um, there are other batteries that uh, Michael was, Michael Fisher was talking about some batteries that, that don't have that. And there are external balancing uh, devices that can be procured pretty inexpensively. I uh, can't tell you how well they work. The batteries I'm familiar with, usually we'll have them in the charger or they will have onboard uh, balancing circuitry. Um, and, and I'll talk about that in, in another slide. Um, let's see. So there's a paper written by Texas Instruments who makes chips that go into chargers. They want to sell their chips. So somebody wrote a nice white paper on how imbalance arms performance and different types of balancing. And this, this paper is, is, a, is a great paper if you want to take some extra time and read it. Um, BioNO, a lot of us have BioNO batteries. Um, they talk about having an onboard battery management system, uh, and they call it a PCM, uh, protection circuit module, that's actually on the battery. And these are the types of protection it's providing over current of the voltage, over discharge. It will only let you discharge to a certain level. Um, if the temperature gets above or below a certain point, it'll cut out. Short circuit, there's theoretical protection. I would, wouldn't necessarily want to uh, try it. And the charging circuitry is, is integrated. Um, now, the, the PCM, or the, bat, the embedded circuitry on the battery takes a little bit of power. So uh, one of the parameters that we look at when we look at different types of batteries is the self-discharge rate. The self-discharge rate for nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride is kind of high. The self-discharge rate for LFP and NMC is very low, but the PCM circuitry takes a little bit of power. So uh, BioNO says, make sure you charge your battery every eight to 10 weeks. Let's talk about charging the battery and maximizing the battery life during charging. Um, top charging tip, respect a constant current, constant voltage charging process. Well, what that means is for a battery that's somewhat depleted, the voltage is gonna be low and you're gonna charge at this constant current. So the green line is voltage uh, and the voltage is low when the battery is somewhat depleted. The blue line is the current and the gray curve is the state of charge. So at a low state of charge, when you're coming in from a low state of charge, you come in with a constant current. And oh, by the way, 
I was not able to find a current limit setting on BioNO's battery charger. I was on the Victron, and I bought Victron for solar because I can choose my charging rate with the Victron. You're kind of stuck with what BioNO gives you. And as we'll see, the charging rate uh, when you're charging a battery impacts its life. <laughs> so the voltage starts low, the current is constant. Then when the voltage comes up to a certain level, you see by the green line, and you see the vertical line. Um, at that point, there's a, there's a transition and the charger goes from constant current into a constant voltage mode. The voltage stays relatively flat. Yeah, it's, 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 it's increasing a little bit with state of charge, but there's a knee in that curve and the current starts dropping off. Does that make sense? That's a, that's a concept of constant current, constant voltage. There were two charging regions to oversimplify. And some people talk about more regions. They talk about, particularly with lead acid, they talk about bulk charging, which is, well, whenever you go to the screen, you see the Yeah. Right. Um, the, the, the lead acid people talk about three charging states or four charging states or three. They talk about bulk charging. Well, that's when the battery is depleted. You're putting in the constant current. Then once you get up to a certain level, you go into a, what they call absorption charging, and that's uh, up at 98% state of charge. This is for lead acid. Um, for charging lithium batteries, you don't need much absorption. You go right from, you almost go right from bulk into float. And after absorption, float charging is, um, it's just kind of like topping off. It's almost like trickle charging. But with a lithium battery, you don't want to leave it constantly floated. For the, in most cases, you'll kill it if you do that. You're, it's better to charge it almost all the way up and then leave it. Uh, and you can store it for a long time that way. And we'll talk about storage. Top tip, lower your charging rate. The battery has a maximum rated charging rate. If you cut that in half, it's going to take longer to charge your battery but the battery will last longer. You're gonna get more out of it. Um, and this talks a little bit about why. Uh, char faster charging rates, for example, for mobile uh, 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 EV app, electric vehicle applications is possible um, with special electrode construction, but it, they're not gonna last as long. You're, you're gonna pay a penalty. Uh, the lifespan will be shorter. So there's, there's a trade-off there. If you can take the time to charge your battery at half its published maximum charge rate, you're gonna, you're gonna get more life out of it. Another thing is control the charging temperature. Um, lithium, ion, lithium ion batteries don't like to be charged below freezing. Um, theoretically, you can do it uh, if you cut the charging rate way down, but it's just not something you want to do. Um, you don't want to charge it when battery at, at, at too high a temperature either. Um, so typically above freezing. And here uh, it talks about a maximum of uh, 45 degrees C, which is what, about 100 for 108 maybe, something like that, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, with, a, with a C over two charging rate. So um, charge it, you know, keep it below 40 to 35 degrees C, 98.6 uh, is 37 degrees C, and above freezing. And if you can reduce the, uh, the C rate, the charging rate, you're, it's gonna, you know, that, that, that'll help it last longer. So let's talk about using the battery, uh, discharging the lithium ion battery. Um, lower the C rate. Again, the C rate for discharging is different than the C rate for charging. Dirk, what's the C rate? The current at which it's the current. 
the it's the amperes that you're either putting in or taking out. Typically, the C rate for charging is lower, um, but at high rate of discharge, um, you're 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 going to shorten the light the 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 life of the battery a little. Um, and this 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 curve here talks about the effect of different C rates at a constant temperature and the curves that uh, have, th this is actually capacity versus, uh, uh, let's see, is this capacity? Yeah, capacity. Uh, the, you, the higher capacity curve on top is at a lower C rate. And this is giving you capacity different uh, capacities of different, uh, showing you how C rates during discharging impact capacity. You see a substantial, substantially lower uh, capacity with the lower curve at the same temperature. Uh, be mindful of the temperature. We just talked about the importance of, of temperature when you're charging, similar with discharging. Um, this curve shows at a constant C rate, the impact of capacity on uh, uh, with temperature. And you, you, you see that uh, at lower temperatures, the capacity goes down. And you don't wanna be above 35, 35, 40 degrees C. Okay, favorized. Uh, these, some of these slides came from SAF, who is one of the uh, major global guys for industrial batteries. Um, but I think they're in Europe, so some of the wording is a, a little funky. Favorize a partial depth of discharge. This curve is talking about uh, at, uh, if, if, I, if I keep this, the discharge rate at C over 2, the, the published acceptable discharge rate, if I keep it at half that, um, the impact of depth of discharge on the number of cycles. And I see that if I stay at, uh, well, if, if I go all the way down to zero, I'm going to get less light on my depth of discharge. Or if I go 100%, my state of charge is zero, but I discharge the battery all the way down. Uh, I'm going to reduce the number of cycles. Uh, if I reduce the depth of discharge, I'm going to get more cycles. That's all it's saying. So, you know, one way to do that, if my requirement is, uh, let's say, 10 ampere hours, if I buy a 20 ampere hour battery, then I'm paying more for the battery, but I'm going to have half the depth of discharge. This is pretty good. This chart talks about LFP voltages versus the state of charge. And it's just giving you the state of charge in percent in the first column, the voltage in the second column. And uh, at two at, at point two times C. Uh, and this is for discharging. Um, I'm not sure what VO, v, oh, that's open circuit voltage. That's what that is. VOC is probably uh, voltage open circuit, like with no load. Uh, but if I, if I put a light load uh, in this column, in the, in the third column, I can see that if I get down to a 20% state of charge, which is What's the depth of discharge with a 20% state of charge remaining? Was 80, that's right. So 80% depth or 20% state of charge, 80% depth of discharge, I'm gonna to expect to see about 12.9 volts. And again, this is gonna go up and down based on temperature. Uh, do's and don'ts for storage. Um, here we talk about storing between state of charge, storing, having the state of charge in lithium batteries of between 50 and 60% is optimal. 
Um, you can store them below freezing as long as you don't use them. Uh, they hate heat and charging and discharging. Um, they, let's see, this bullet here, uh, 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 bad at high temperatures. Okay, so um, at super low temperatures, uh, having 100% state of charge, I should have, should have said that backwards. Super low temperatures, you can store them. It's optimal to have 50 or 60% at you know below freezing. Uh, the electrolyte typically won't freeze. You can store them as long as you don't use them. Um, for higher temperatures, above 45 degrees C, don't store them at zero you discharge and don't store them at 100%, uh, 50 to 60%. Store them at 50 to 60%. Uh, and don't use them below freezing. Don't charge them or discharge them. And uh, you can store them at higher temperatures, but um, above 45 degrees C, particularly, uh, don't be charging and discharging. And don't store them at 100% charged or 100% discharged at, at high temperature. They don't like it. Okay, sizing example. So we're operating a station at a rest, we're operating a, 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 a transceiver at a rest station, uh, four hours at medium RF power. I'm gonna assume maybe 30 seconds of transmission every five minutes. Uh, I'm gonna, at medium power, I know that I'm using about 25 watts. So I just did a swag. Let's say that I'm gonna pull 50 watts to deliver 25 watts. Um, my transmit duty cycle is 30 seconds every five minutes uh, or about one minute every 10 minutes. So if I do the math on that, I see I, I, I have about uh, 20 watt hours of transmit over four hours. Um, and I note that 30 seconds is well beyond the published two second peak current rating. So I, I, I want to look I don't want to be looking at the two second peak current rating when I'm checking to make sure I have a big enough battery. Um, so I've got uh, 20 watt hours of transmit. Uh, my received load is about five watts. So I've got another 20 watt hours of received load over four hours. So that gives me a total of 40 watt hours that I'm going to use up. Uh, I'm going to put a safety factor of 1.25 because engineers love to do that. Uh, so let's say I, I 50%, I'm looking at somewhere around 50 watt hours with that safety factor. And if I want to uh, translate that back to current, that's something like 4.2 ampere hours <laughs> at 12 volts. Um, so if I want to go, so that that's, that's what I'm basing. If I want to go to about 50% uh, depth of discharge uh, and I select, uh, well, let's say I want to go to 80% depth of discharge, I'm going to select six ampere hours because I'm going to use 80% of what, whether, whatever ampere hours I choose. If I choose six, 80% uh, of that is um, 4.8 which is still above my uh, uh, 4.2. And so I know that if I use that thing at medium power for four hours, I'm probably not going to go below 80% depth of discharge, which is good. Uh, then, as just as a, uh, a sanity check or another check, I want to make sure that, that the battery is rated to deliver the 4.2 amps at transmit uh, at 12 volts, because that's you know during transmit, that's about what I'm going to see. Uh, and this battery is rated 12 amps, so I'm almost at a discharge rate. If I'm rated at 12 and I'm pulling four, what's my what's my discharge C? It's C over four. It's 12 over uh, four, which is about three. It's about uh, C over three. Uh, so that's a pretty nice, comfortable place to be and not beat the hell out of my battery. So that's kind of a size, a simple sizing example.
I, it's all computerized inside. You can see a display on front here that uh, it tells you the input, the output, and uh, we got your new product plastic on it. That's yeah, why you can't see it. There we go. Yeah. Now we see it. And, and the percentage of charge. And all of that's computer, computerized. You don't have to do any calculations in your head. I, I, the uh, folks that engineered this take care of all that for you. And <clears throat> uh, what are the pluses and minuses on this for uh, uh, ham use? Well, uh, the plus is it has terrific capacity. Uh, what you do, this is roughly the equivalent of one circuit in your house. And with uh, 60 ampere hours, so long as you don't want to put your toaster oven on here, I, it'll uh, last quite a while. The uh, downside of it is on the 12 volt side, the only 12 volt outlet is actually right here and on a USB-C. The USB-C will uh, put out uh, 12 volts, but uh, only at two amps, which for ham purposes is almost useless. Uh, and it has the uh, lighter socket here for uh, 10 amps. Now, what you can't do is cheat on this because it has internal circuits on here. And when you hit 10.5, uh, this sucker will shut down. Uh, it's designed to protect uh, battery life and the circuit itself. And remember, it is a lithium ion battery. So you're going to have, uh, if you don't take care of the care and feeding of this thing, you have a fire threat out of it, uh, uh, probably in spades because it's a pretty good sized uh, uh, battery. How do you deal with that? What you do is you simply get your power supply and plug it in the one, 110 side. I have used it uh, uh, as a backup, for example, on Dipsy that uh, had uh, my little MFJ uh, power supply plugged it in and I will put out whatever the rating is on your, on your power supply. So that's a way to do that. A uh, couple of comments, on, if you can just back up and take a look. This is the equipment that comes with it. I, this is actually just half of the set. <clears throat> The other half of the set is uh, uh, the uh, solar charger. I, I didn't bring those out. We, we have them in the back back there. Uh, you have two 100 watt panels that will put out uh, uh, 200 watt charge into this. It has the uh, charging uh, receptacle that plugs in here. And this is where your solar goes in. Here is the charger for it. This is a smart charger that goes into an even smarter battery and uh, it plugs in with a little bar barrel connector right over here and it will show you what the uh, rate is. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, charging on uh, solar. This is from uh, Harbor Freight, but it's a controller. If you use anything but the uh, uh, Jackery panel that comes with it, you must use a controller uh, because the voltage is going to come out too hot, too high out of a solar panel and you're apt to fry your battery. Yeah, there are two things, let me talk about that. There are two things when you get a controller, you absolutely need to look at a control for lithium. You should be looking at a controller that allows you to set a maximum charging rate that's programmable that you can set at C over two or C over three based on the spec of the battery, number one. Number two, it's important to get what's called an MPPT controller so that you optimize the voltage uh, based on the, uh, the amount of sunlight you're getting. Because and during any given charge cycle, uh, it's going to change. Yeah, MPPT and programmable current limit and set the, like that current limit to C over two or you know whatever you are willing to tolerate. But uh, anyway, uh, this will run your whole ham shack. So if uh, you're going out camping and going to have extended period, uh, uh, this is going to be your choice. Bob, you want to come over and address your box here? Yeah, this one is kind of similar. This, there was a, 
a website called High on Solder that had a bunch of go kits, and one of them was a battery module. This just got a 40 ampere hour, 12 volt lithium uh, LFP battery. Uh, it's got a, a, a charge controller from um, uh, uh, Mountain Western Mountain Radio. It's called the Epic Power Gate, I think. And it lets you optimize for LFP. Um, it has a port for solar, and it's an MPPT. Uh, it's got a port for a power supply and a port out to your, your radio. And then um, it's got a little circuit breaker here and kind of an expensive uh, meter that will monitor uh, charge in and out. Um, I leave the circuit breaker off and I have a feeling whenever I turn the circuit breaker off that I probably wipe out whatever uh, memory was in here. So I just typically look at voltage. I see that a 13.33, which means it's well above the 12.8 I was looking at before. And by the way, we used this yesterday for four hours at um, Muir Beach for the dirt fondo. This is what we use for our, our rig and it looks like it's got plenty left. We have dealt with this. Ridiculous. For you who are present here, I'd encourage you to come up here until you get a better look. Uh, we're now into the uh, lead acid arena. Uh, for my lead acid, I like to use uh, AGM because it's a little bit more stable. You don't have the settling of uh, lead to the bottom of the batteries as much as you do with just a pure lead acid battery. Uh, this is a uh, uh, 30 ampere hour uh, battery that I just simply put into a battery box and souped up the battery box a little bit. It has uh, outlets up on top here. It has the uh, uh, lighter outlet. Uh, no, no, uh, uh, how heavy is that? Just out of curiosity, versus the forty. Heavy. <laughs> and about the same. Uh, a little <laughs> less. Uh, uh, the forty is a little bit less, but not a lot. Question uh, from Bruce: As you go, what does all this stuff cost? Well, you have quite a bit of hardware here around your battery, so. Uh, the, and, and in here. I, can't, uh, I carry the charger. The reason I don't use fill it up with a full uh, battery is I carry a lot of uh, peripherals in here uh, uh, to be able to charge the battery. Uh, this is a uh, smart, I use the term loosely, from Harbor Freight. Uh, it uh, has diff different charge uh, modes depending on the battery. And when you plug it in, it will display uh, the type of battery, then you select the one that you want. And uh, the rate on AGM is different than it is for regular lead acid, I might add. Um, this is uh, the Go, my Go kit uh, battery has really good life on it. Uh, like uh, Bob, this is what we use the Tennessee Valley for the first half uh, of the day on uh, on Saturday. And so far, your cheap AGM has way outlast your expensive. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, okay, how, how do I me measure battery life on this? I, there, I turn on the uh, uh, charger and uh, up on top, and there's a display. This also has uh, uh, USB ports on it as well. We have the outlets on the front for the Anderson power poles. We have uh, both uh, a banana plug and uh, regular uh, terminal for here. And uh, it's worked very well. And the way I measure the uh, uh, battery life and how we're doing on it, uh, just in idling uh, on battery, I won't tell you too much, but when you wind up keying your transmitter, you want to see how much the voltage falls. 
and uh, you're going to wind up losing a half a volt when your battery starts getting tired, and uh, uh, and that increases. That is the voltage that you want to be aware of, because uh, a lot of equipment. Uh, when I move over to my uh, radio over here, I'll, I'll get into a couple of specifics on it. Uh, uh, the equipment's going to be voltage sensitive. Has an under voltage cutout. Exactly. The equipment has an under voltage cutout. So if you exceed the under voltage, the minimum voltage of your device, that is going to drop off. Now, for uh, Bob talks about float. This is a cheap uh, Harbor Freight. It's uh, fixed voltage, fixed rate. The uh, rate of charge on this is like about three quarters of an amp. And uh, it's good for float. And that's usually what I, I keep on this. And you can get this for five bucks or so. Uh, all right, moving over here. This, this is Lead Acid City here. Uh, all right, this is my go kit, and I have built in a uh, 12 uh, ampere hour battery, roughly the equivalent of this one right here. Uh, and uh, this is AGM. These two are not. As a matter of fact, the front one may be. Uh, I, they, may, I, they may just be straight lead us. The uh, uh, big ones this size, this one and this one are 12 ampere hour, the small one is 7 ampere hour. Seven ampere hour is going to be absolutely the least that you're going to want to uh, take for uh, public service sector size. <laughs> it's going to depend on the output of your uh, transmitter and how much it draws. Uh, this is wired through a circuit up on top up here, and uh, it has over here the capability of charging using a wall wart through the uh, little barrel port right here. And uh, what I can do is use this, plug this in here, make sure I don't, because this, this is on, or it will be when I put so the wires are on. So uh, you go in here and can use the uh, float charger for that. Just put the clips on the end of the, uh, or plug in a uh, wall wire. And when it's charging, the light will d display. So uh, you'll note that it's on. Uh, to keep track of the life of the battery. And I do this when uh, it's running, P plug that in. So dual purpose uh, lighter uh, outlet on, on that. And uh, this little radio draws uh, uh, or puts out 25 watts. So the uh, it draws maybe six, seven amps. And uh, to give you an idea, uh, when a couple of years ago, at the Dipsy, uh, our regular radio didn't show up, ran three quarters of the day off of this box here, uh, which uh, was impressive for me. I didn't think it would last that long. You know, it would do as well as it did. And it was only the end of the day that we wind up picking up a, uh, a TMV 71A to finish up the uh, drill. So uh, this can get the job done. This is. Totally self-contained. The only thing that's not here is a uh, an antenna, and you can actually put an antenna on, on this, but that, that's for another day. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, the uh, FT60. Uh, FT60 uh, is uh, my favorite handy talking, most people I try to sell as we got out, not literally, but to uh, argue for them uh, when somebody inquires what's a good entry level uh, handy talking, this is it. Uh, but uh, again, we have care and feeding of batteries on the FT60. The FT60, this has a lithium ion battery on it. It doesn't come with a lithium ion battery, it comes with a uh, nickel metal hybrid. This is a uh, replacement nickel metal hybrid battery. And this is uh, a, you can put uh, uh, the, but yeah, well, this, yeah, well, the, the, this is a, a double A replacement. You don't charge this sucker, even though these are uh, uh, lithium batteries. I, no, most people put uh, alkaline batteries on here, but they do sell uh, 
uh, lithium uh, double A's that have a better life. I've never but, seen lithium double A's. I've seen nickel metal hydride double A's. Nickel, the, the, aren't the lithium ones usually larger? Uh, you're looking at them. Yeah, oh, amounts. these are lithium, not a not recharge, lithium. not lithium not, ion. Yeah. No, no, these are not lithium rechargeable. These, these are, are lithium, never, right? You right. don't want to recharge anything that looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can get nickel metal hydride that are rechargeable. And uh, anyway, uh, so we have three different, uh, total different uh, chemistries on the, uh, the batteries here. And uh, this is a smart charger. Uh, the one thing I found uh, is that if you just wind up getting the vanilla uh, FP60, you're going to get a wall ward that will plug into the, to the site. It does an absolutely terrible job of uh, charging batteries. And I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, my battery's gone dead. I just have really good uh, life on the uh, ESU. Well, the, I, the problem is not less the battery than the charging technique. The wall board uh, will not charge it uh, correctly, certainly with the uh, lithium uh, ion battery pack like you have on here. You do not want to charge using the wall board because you have no, zero control over the, the rate and uh, the uh, wall warts that came with that will not charge the uh, lithium ion pack that's on there right now. Uh, this is a smart charger. It was designed for nickel metal hybrid. Yeah, that one would use a light pole battery. It's say use a target that can put fourteen point four. Some specific. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting to get into that next. The uh, uh, this is a smart charger that I got at the uh, recommendation of Dan Healy. Uh, uh, K6NQ is that, uh, and it's a little bit more expensive than the ones that come from, with, uh, uh, from Yesu. They also have a desk charger uh, such as this. But uh, what it does, uh, I had a nickel metal hybrid that I swore was dead and put it on here and it brought it back to life and it was great. And, and in fact, I, I neglected to bring it, but uh, it was the one that originally came with uh, that radio. And uh, it will uh, charge this and you absolutely need it for sure for the uh, uh, lithium ion version of it. But I was really impressed by the, uh, this charger. Okay, moving on to the bio -NO, uh, uh LiPo battery, and uh, that's what I think most people wind up calling it uh, uh, LiPo. This is a 20 ampere hour uh, uh, bio -NO. I got it at the uh, Pacific Con, I think in 2018 or 2019, whenever the last one was before uh, COVID blew them away. And uh, it comes with a charger. And as someone uh, observed earlier, uh, and there is a light on the back of it right here that uh, when you plug it in, uh, it's red until it goes to full charge and then it goes to green. Uh, I have not measured the output on it, but my impression is that it stops charging. Uh, and that's because this tells it to uh, not accept any, any more juice coming in. And is it possible that the charger has uh, died? Uh, it worked. <laughs> I'm, I can show you when we're through here. Uh, anyhow, uh, I used this for a year. And then we were out uh, uh, at an event out in San Geronimo, and I had uh, this drove the. Uh, uh, well, the place where it actually failed was uh, San Toronto, but I was using it to ride, uh, drive the uh, TMV-71A, and it did fine. And when this thing goes, I remember here we were talking about voltage drop. No voltage drop. It went from 13.4 to zero, like that, uh, and simply shut down. And uh, that that's true of any LiPo battery because of the uh, circuitry in it. Uh, is designed to protect the battery. And when 
it's a party's over. And yeah, even uh, without battery management, this is all battery in that uh, ventilation. It, it, it reaches a knee and it looks like really Yeah, it, it's, it's a cliff. Yeah, it's flat to it's not. <laughs> so uh, with, with this, I, uh, on the little lead acid uh, battery in here, I, I use the technique I was talking about before. I'll key the transmitter and uh, keep track of the voltage. When this sucker reaches on uh, this little radius here, when the battery voltage reaches uh, uh, 11 and a half volts, party's over. Uh, the uh, radio shuts down to protect itself. And so that's where it was really important to keep track of the voltage on here. No such thing on here. Uh, you'll be going along at 13.4, uh, press the key and it's gone. And that, if I had a radio, I would show you. Uh, that's a problem with it right now. There's apparently a cell dead or something in it. Uh, it only lasted a year and I was really disappointed that uh, right now, this has now put, if I put a voltmeter on about 13.4 volts, uh, but it has uh, no load. Uh, no load. Yeah, it was, uh, on, uh, in terms of ampere hours on there, uh, do you want to plug it in and see? Uh, in terms of ampere hours on it, uh, uh, we're measuring it in ampere seconds. How do you know it's not a charger problem? Uh, I don't know. 14.2. Uh, right now it's at what, 14.18? 14.2. It's up at 14.2 and it won't deliver a load to something wrong with the battery of it. I that's Bob's theory. I don't know. I think Mel did something wrong. I think he's guilty as hell. <laughs> yeah, plugging it into the wall without the charger probably did it. I plug it into the wall without a charger. <laughs> That's okay. I would send it back to Bioware. Yeah. 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 I've got the same one if you want to try my charge <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Now, this, we have gone from the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I, my uh, uh, brother in law I got one of these things to be able to uh, uh, deal with charging his phone with the USB port. And uh, my wife, oh, yeah, it's a, this is in a light. <laughs> uh, my wife uh, got this for me for Christmas. And uh, because as I mentioned before, she's now uh, into battery mode. And this would be great for the neighbors uh, for the next power outage. But anyway, I, you turn this on, gives you the uh, uh, amount of power remaining. And I uh, just abused the hell out of it by because I uh, topped it off. But anyway, uh, I, I neglected to bring it. But there's a uh, barrel plug that goes in here that uh, has a lighter socket on it. Now, why am I presenting this to you? I have run uh, an IC uh, uh, 706 on this for a couple of times. Uh, couple of hours at 50 watts and it works like a champ. Uh, Got to keep the uh, uh, output down and the amperage draw down. So a uh, matter of fact, I would say 50 watts is probably too much. You would probably want to run your radio at about 20 watts to keep the uh, both of the amperage draw below 10 because it's using uh, lighter. Uh, the lighter circuit typically has a 10, uh, 10 amp fuse on it, so you can't cheat. Uh, however, this is from yep. uh, the uh, Go Box. Uh, uh, those of you who are familiar with races, uh, we have uh, some of us have been issued Go Boxes. That's where I get my uh, uh, TMV71A. And uh, uh, Rob Ireson and uh, uh, Steve Wilson, SDY, uh, rigged it up so that the power source is going to be using a uh, plug, just a regular lighter plug. 
but there's no 10 amp fuse in it. Uh, so but you get, still got to be careful when you plug the sucker in because if you put you can run it in a car, but you're not going to be able to run it at full power because uh, it'll maybe run the radio, uh, but it won't run it for very long because you wind up melting the fuse in your car, which is 10, uh, 10 amps. So I, I think the circuitry on one of these guys, if you have a, a good quality one, uh, it can probably handle 15 amps. I, I would be careful of it. You can check and make sure that it doesn't get warm on you. That has a, this has a fuse in it, right? That, uh, so, yeah, that one I think. Yeah. And, and it'll, it, you'll, you'll see. I don't know that I can get it off, but you'll, see, you can when you, yeah. There you go. Can you read that? It's a Bussman fuse. You just wrapped ten foil. Twenty amps. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please. Yeah, uh, bear in mind that that's from the go box. So I think it was uh, probably Steve put that 20 amp fuse yeah, in. I, I think it, the fuses were smart there. But uh, uh, this little radio operates off of by plugging in here. Now you can see there's juice in here. Uh, but uh, this won't draw over 10 amps on its worst day. But uh, when you start using a, a big rig on it, that's gonna be another matter. Uh, but that is very handy. If, if Remember, you take in, into consideration the battery you have and the rig you're trying to run off of. What you wanna do is if you can't get the battery up to meet the rig, you gotta bring the rig down to uh, meet the battery. Well, the point is that you can start your car with this. Thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this, this a good point. Uh, my wife got it because of this, but it's also a, a car charger. So it'll give you an idea of the short term capacity this thing has. I don't know whether it has uh, uh, capacitors in it or just a. Oh, is that a. Uh, is that what jump the ones that'll jump start? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's cool. That's amazing. Right. So, uh, I, if you're on a serious venture with uh, uh, public service or emergency or whatever, really wise to have one of these because uh, uh, it can help you out and uh, keep you afloat until you get a chance to swap out uh, your one of your larger batteries. No cool makes the, uh, the jumpers too. So, here's a little flashlight that has a. Uh, Lithium battery, and it will give you the um, the the indication that it's got. You can charge your phone here. You charge this thing here with a little micro USB. And it's got the little thing to break your window if you get stuck in your car. <laughs> uh, Dirk brought in a great uh, gizmo here for measuring uh, the power usage on. Uh, for a battery, and he will show you how it works now. Is that a, a straight voltmeter, Kirk, or is it a this is, counter? Is this, it, this, is, this is a counter, so it's got... It's very much like... I think we so what, what, you, only what you got here is, is it's showing volts. There's no draw, so, um, right. so you don't see these. The top two are constant, tell you how much amps you're pulling and how much volt. Okay, the bottom keeps going. You'll see the, the suffix on, on these things. You've got watt hours, you've got amp hours. Um, yeah. and, and over on this side, I guess this won't change right now, but it'll, it'll show you the total mo uh, number of watts pulled during its use. Hmm. Um, so that's what I was talking about when I was yep. saying this keeps rotating through five different parameters right, right. now it says amp peak uh volt minimum watt peak amp hours, amp hours. there's one more uh, watt hours watt hours right so that's what i was asking about when i was saying how am i going to figure my remaining capacity that kind of thing 
I would be looking, I believe, at this down here would have told me how many watts I'd pulled. Okay. Watt um, hours is what you want. Watt, okay, watt hours up here. And, or amp hours. Or, or amp hours. That's what you want. Amp okay, hours. and so before I disconnect, I would want to write that down. It's and, go away when you disconnect. Yeah. Yeah, it's all gone. There's no memory. So okay. who makes one of these that doesn't have that problem? I don't use mine anymore for that reason. I'm not going to keep a log somewhere. Is there one like, does that one have a persistent memory? No. No, no. He, he opens the breaker, it's gone too. So none of these have persistent memory. Well, there may be one. I just don't know. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, that, that makes a big difference. Otherwise, you need to have one of those uh, hearing aid batteries in there. To right. Too, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what it needs. Yeah. Or just let it just don't, 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 don't kill it. Yeah. So, PowerWorks sells one of these. For about forty-five bucks, um, you can get them online in a slightly different case. I think the the main difference is is really the plastic on top here um, for about nineteen. Yeah, it's ten dollars on eBay. Um, this is this is charger from from the Jackery solar panel. Um, this one is PowerWorks. Uh, it does limit the voltage. It is made specifically for um, for LiPo batteries. Um, but what it doesn't have is it doesn't have the cutoff or or the 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 the, 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 the voltage control. Um, <coughs> so um, it sounds like what I've learned here is I'm going to want something. That's gonna that's gonna uh, be between this and the battery. Is that right? Well, you, you just you need to get a charge control that has some definable maximum charge rate that you are looking at your published C rate, and you need to, you need to get one that is whatever you choose C over two, right? Something less than C, preferably C over two. So, so the um, to give you a concrete with, example on what Dirk's talking about, uh, uh, Rob Rollins had uh, put in a couple of solar panels to charge a lipo battery. Didn't put one on, and the uh, lipo batteries is now in lipo battery heaven because he just mm -hmm. absolutely killed it. So these these ones come with bare ends, so you're going to have to put your own um, your own Anderson power points on it. Uh, this one I originally connected to a solar uh, panel set that my wife decided we should get because one of her friends did, um, and and uh, since I've gotten the Jackery one. I've had to, um, I've had to make a, a jumper between the two so that I can go from yeah, be careful from that to uh, to power poles. Be careful of what, that when you put a a controller between your solar panel and your battery, that you got the right controller for that battery. And the fact that it says LifePo uh, compatible doesn't necessarily mean it's the right. There are a whole bunch of parameters you need to look at to, to make yeah, sure. And that one's designed for the uh, jack. Yeah. So this one, this one is is one that Rob Rollins suggested. Um, and that's what I'm using um, at this point. Significantly less expensive than iPhone, um, but seems to be working fine. That looks like it is like. Yeah. I mean, Ben Bi Bieno. Yeah. 